and just five minutes to nine and I'm at the gate of Bodhanath Stupa. Let me take you inside the premises of Bodhanath. Okay, here is the beautiful Tibetan style gate with the image of dragon. You can see this image of dragon over here at the gate and the stupa itself inside. Let's get in. And there's a notice intended at the visitors. Please get your entrance ticket from the counter. Your contribution will support the following activities to clean the environment of the site, to construct and renovate the cultural and archaeological site to promote tourism of the Bodhanath area, mobilizing public participation and so on. This is for foreign visitors. We don't have to pay anything because we are Nepalese people. Please pay in Nepali currency for ticket. So even if you have US dollars, whatever currency of the world, you can get it changed into Nepali currency before you visit this place. <clears throat> so, look at the night view of this Buddhanath Stupa or Bodhanath Stupa, whatever you call it. This is one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites of Cultural Importance. So this is a pilgrimage for the Buddhists and you see all the people regardless of religion visit this place even just to take photographs, just to shoot a video or something like that. And you see many monks and nuns around here because uh, close by this place there are monasteries where these monks and nuns reside, they study Buddhist philosophy and then they just spread the message of Lord Buddha. He always emphasized non-violence. By non-violence, it's not only not killing animals or being vegetarian. It is not hurting people's emotions, not hurting anyone. This is the true non-violence. Now, let me take you around this place. Uh, this is the stupa. You see the spire at the top. Let me zoom in and show you a little. Look at those peaceful eyes. So these eyes are half closed. They symbolize tranquility within. If your mind is peaceful, then this is what you look like. And look at the spire. And these holy flags all around here. So you cannot climb up there, but you just go around this place and you see all around here handicraft shops and all sort of shops intended at tourists, foreign visitors. And in this place you have uh, some good eateries as well. So you, you have four double nine Vietnamese cuisine, Vietnamese restaurant here and Thangkai schools some jewelry items here and let me show you here the prayer wheels I've already talked about these prayer wheels earlier as well so you spin them around you see you see the prayer wheels when you spin these prayer wheels once every spin every round they go count as once uh, you chant the mantras written there so you mean if uh, you spin these all the wheels you don't have to take a rosary and count how many times you chanted uh, the mantras so this is a good idea like and I come to the other face of the stupa and look at this all the four faces look exactly the same and the dome is over there all white this looks so tranquil at the and the light shining from all the sides this is i would say tranquility personified 
and these rosaries and armbands and bracelets some pretty good ones you can see here and this Rudraksha Lord Shiva's favorite uh, this might be key ring or something and some hemp bags pencil cases and all made of hemp sustainable product biodegradable product and these lamps to be offered to Lord Buddha you can buy one of these are they for sale madam are they for sale are they you are keeping them for selling how much do we have to pay for one 20 rupees per lamp so you can buy five lamps and offer to Lord Buddha for 100 rupees that's cheap and so here there are some good restaurants where you can sit and uh, look at the stupa and enjoy your food as well <coughs> so both the stupa view restaurant and all a little greenery over there wow this feels so peaceful within like you just enter this area and then you feel like you are not in this world you are liberated from all the pains of this world all the grief of this world wow i just want to be here all the time like forget everything so this is the gate it's locked the i think the monks and nuns enter from there and this big prayer wheel here you rotate you spin it one round this is pretty heavy and now see uh, it it was going around three times so I chanted the mantras written here three times that's how we count and in here there is a golden statue of Lord Buddha but unfortunately we can't have a good view because of this windows uh, let me spin this one more time that means i've chanted it three and seven ten times so all these gates are locked so all around the walls uh, there are these prayer wheels you can spin this and everywhere you can see these lamps being sold so you can buy one of these lamps and offer to Lord Buddha Wow there is a uh, teaching of Lord Buddha may all sentient beings be happy healthy and peaceful and people just come here at this place to do a evening walk or if they come in the morning for a morning walk as well and there is a special bow to Lord Buddha uh, that these local people call Kora I don't know how to translate that in English but that is a way of bowing and you see lots of young ladies doing that and this keeps their waist size very small So, a monk playing with his rosary there, not really counting the beads, but just playing. And some youngsters busy taking photographs. And the other face, you see every face looks exactly the same, except for the flags, like they are concentrated at the four corners. These, all these flags contain 
something written in the Tibetan language. That is, I would say, the official language of the Buddhist people, of the monks of uh, Nepal. But Lord Buddha himself, if I am not mistaken, he spoke and used the Pali language, which has a close connection with the Sanskrit language. So that Pali language was the language that Lord Buddha used. And there is this renowned chain restaurant called Roadhouse Cafe. You can call, come here for breakfast or a nice slice of pizza. And we can't enter, all the gates are locked. We just move around. So I think I've completed one revolution here. I started from this very place and I'm back here that completes one round and there's the gate you exit from there again the dragon image is carved in Tibetan style at the gate and a fruit vendor close by and on this side if you see there are good Thangka schools and Thangka uh, shops where one Thangka painting can cost uh, 400,000, 500,000 rupees, that is uh, mm, around, you can say, 3,000 dollars, 3,000 US dollars. That's pretty expensive because they use gold and silver and all these materials in creating these uh, Thangka paintings. But these bags here, these handmade bags, they look pretty appealing. And uh, for tourists, like you have these images of a dragon, <laughs> and this must be the wheel of life, according to Buddhist philosophy. And if you are patriotic, you have this nationalistic feeling. You can have this as well. Top of the world, Mount Everest, Nepal. Mount Everest, Nepal here. Om. And this symbol of Bajra, all these bags, you can buy one of these here. I don't know how much they are. And then these hemp products, these bags, you see, these are made of hemp. And these are uh, the foreigners' favorites because they like biodegradable products. And or here. I saw a meme on Facebook, like the German people, they were proud that they invented, they made, created plates out of leaves and somebody had trolled them saying that the Indians had done that some 2000 or 3000 years ago. So that was the idea. Okay folks, one more time I'll give you this last glimpse of this stupa. This is peaceful. And I wish you all a good night. Sleep tight and don't let the bed box bite. Good night. <laughs>